Carpe Diem, seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome to Carpe Diem. On this episode, we're going back in time to my travels to Spain in the time before COVID. Now, when I think of Spain, I think of family gatherings, amazing food, and of course, the wine. Goyo García Villadero is a winemaker in northern Spain who's made a name for himself through his award-winning organic wines. Now, let's take a look at how he produces his famous vintages. I'm in northern Spain in wine country, Ribera del Duero, and I'm going to introduce you to a fabulous owner, winemaker, and he's world-renowned for his organic wines, Goyo García Villadero. And look who's at the front door. Yay! Hello. <laughs> Hola. Hello, Carmen. How are you? I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> and I'm very excited because I heard about your wines and I heard about your caves. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I want to see them. I want to taste them. Well, I, I think it's better to go to the vineyards and, and then okay, the caves. Okay, perfect. So first we go to the vineyards and then we get to walk through this fabulous okay, door okay, okay. and see what awaits. Better. I can wait. Okay. Okay, okay. I can wait. Come. So how many vineyards do you have? I have three different vineyards and different altitudes and different soils. This is the, the soil, uh, red sand, and this is the... The red stone. The, the, <laughs> the, the river stones, okay. How many different styles of grape do you have? I have uh, three different gray, uh, types of grape. This, this is a Tempranillo? This is Tempranillo. We have white grapes and red grapes interplanted and co-fermentated. And apparently we're going to go do ta some tastings? Yes, now to the cellar. Oh. Come on. <laughs> I love the garden, but I think I'm going to like your cellar better. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. This is the caves, our caves, where we store the wines. This wine, I think uh, it, it will be here uh, about uh, three years in the same barrel. And I guess, Goya, you were telling me that that's one of the special things about your caves, is the humidity plays a big part in the success of your wine. I need humidity because I don't add any acid tartaric, not sulfates, no nothing in the fermentation. You made this wine in yes, 1986. Yes. I was very young. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes. That's got felt on it. Okay. Dust and mold. Yes. Yeah. Do you sell this wine, Goyo? Yes, yes, yes. And if you want to taste, go really? with me upstairs really? and <laughs> taste it. Yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> you see, but I think we can, we can 1986, your first wine. Yes, yeah. This is exciting. It's really incredible. The best part of visiting a winemaker is this. You get to enjoy without doing any of the work. And look at the color. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> It's You're incredible. Uh, yes, You're I am very that. happy. <laughs> oh, that's so fine. Yes, it's very you acidy. Mm. Um, it's very long now. Very expansive in the in the mouth. You can buy your wines everywhere. You don't have to come to Rivera del Duero to buy them. However. You're on Facebook. Uh, Goyo García Viadero. So don't be shy and find Goyo on Facebook and uh, salute to you. Cheers. Congratulations. Yes, thank wow. you. Thank Let me tell you, going into that cave and trying that aged wine is something that I will never forget. You know, I remember when I was a young girl, my uncles would let all the children have a sip of wine at lunch. Wine is part of our Spanish culture. It's in our blood. When we come back, we're going into another cave, the Cueva El Soplao. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. Everybody, no matter if they can walk or not, 
can visit the cave. Carpe diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. On this special episode of Carpe Diem, we're going to Spain. I'm from northern Spain and it's full of natural beauty and we have ocean air, the countryside and stunning wonders like the Cave of El Soplao. Now the cave is high up in the mountains and you need to drive up this windy little road, but the view from up there, even from the parking lot, is stunning. So join me as we explore this UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'm in Cantabria, northern Spain, a country of 47 million people where 20% are over the age of 65. It's very important to the population here that we have accessible streets, plazas that everybody can access. And UNESCO World Heritage Sites like this one are open for tourism. And so today, we're going to go into the magical world of the Cueva of El Soplao. It was in uh, 2005 when the cave was open to public. We realized that the cave wasn't uh, able to be visited for everybody. Sí, es un certificado de accesibilidad universal que es la única cueva en Europa que dispone de él. De hecho, por ejemplo, en España solamente hay tres museos de cierto prestigio que lo tienen, que son el Para nosotros es una satisfacción no solamente por dar un servicio a las personas con discapacidad, sino porque contribuimos a que muchas personas familiares de ellos puedan visitar estas instalaciones que son muy bellas y que bueno, pues hasta hace poco era el 90% visitable y ahora como se puede ver en las imágenes se ha construido un, un elevador para que la, la cueva sea accesible al 100%. So nowadays we are really happy because everybody, no matter if they can walk or not, can visit the, the full way of the cave. Spain was the world's second biggest tourism destination with 84 million visitors in 2019. Due to COVID, a two-month lockdown was enacted on March 6, 2020. On June 2nd, 78% of the country entered into phase three. The cave opened again on June 6, but just for locals. El Soplau started 2020 with record-setting attendance numbers in January and anticipated surpassing their annual 240,000 visitors. Now, the cave operates at 50% capacity with all safety protocols strictly enforced for the limited 70 visitors a day. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. What an amazing experience. For more information, go to elsoplau.es. And of course, come to Cantabria. It's beautiful up here. You know, I'm so glad that people can still enjoy that stunning place, even as COVID has changed everything about how we travel. Now, a short drive down the mountain is my hometown of Pontejos, where the sea is not just for commerce, but for sports. We're a popular destination for surfing and we're very good at developing champion rowers. Let's take a look at one of our famous regattas. I'm in Pontejos. We're about to see regattas that are 24 years in the making. So stick around, we're gonna meet some of the luminaries and Spanish champion twice over. Te tiene que dar mucha emoción ver todo esto que está, pero es que está lleno de gente. Sí, la verdad es que el remo es un deporte que aquí en, en Cantabria y en nuestro municipio, en Marina de Cudello, es muy seguido, practicado por niños y por niñas, como ves. Además tenemos ya una niña que es campeona de España, lo cual en un, en un municipio pequeñito de España como el nuestro tiene, tiene mucho mérito. Breeds champions, it seems, and especially when it comes to rowing. And here we go. Y tus padres también eran remistas, ¿verdad? Sí, remaron en las Olimpiadas y en Mundiales. ¿Y cuándo empezaste tú a remar? Hace dos años, con diez años. Mi sueño es llegar a los Mundiales, a las Olimpiadas y a todo. Y miramos mucho que los chavales 
sean buenos estudiantes y también muy buenos deportistas, nada más. Tenemos un, una cosa muy buena, que es el ayuntamiento que hay ahora, que eso sí apoyan al remo, le apoyan con todas las consecuencias. Una mezcla de tradiciones con, con todo, con América y también, bueno, pues un espacio culinario, ¿verdad, Carmen? Donde poder disfrutar la gente que nos venga a ver y un municipio que si también está en el mapa del mundo es por el golf y por Ay, nuestra gran figura, no por nuestro querido, querido Severiano Ballesteros, ¿verdad? Cuénteme un poco de la época del verano aquí en, en el Marino de Cudillo. Sí, ahora mismo en esta fecha de 15 de, de, de esta fecha de agosto, pues la verdad que estamos en pleno, pleno ajetreo turístico, en pleno ajetreo de, de acontecimientos. Por ahí tenemos este campeonato de remo, por la tarde tenemos un, una partida de bolos, Cantabria, de manera que puede yo también, como no, pues tiene de todo. Tiene unas playas posiblemente de las mejores de España. Tienen cultura, festival internacional en Santander, tienen cuevas prehistóricas, 10 de ellas patrimonios de la humanidad. And that was the fun. I mean, wow, the whole town seemed to be here to support the regatta and I hope that you'll be here next year for the 25th anniversary. So until then, ciao from Northern Spain. You know, there's a real effort by the local government now to support youth sports. And as you heard, they think physical fitness is just as important as education. Good health and a good education, that's a winning combination for quality of life, isn't it? When we come back, we're going across the bay to the very beautiful and cultured city of Santander. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. You can see a lot of surfing people out there, so no matter what the weather is like, this beach is always full. Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. It's my great pleasure to bring you to Spain with me on this very special edition of Carpe Diem. Now, the city of Santander, which is my city, is where the royal family used to summer. The palace and gardens by the seaside are now open to the public. Now, today, Santander is a major holiday destination for much of Europe for the beaches, restaurants, and for shopping. Why don't we take a walking tour? Welcome to Santander. This is my hometown, and behind me is the city, across the bay is the country, and right beside us is the sea. This is God's country. You can see a lot of surfing people out there, so no matter what the weather is like, this beach is always full. Although these waters are known as very treacherous for all the ships. So one of the industries in this market is, guess what, ship repair and shipbuilding. I mean, Santander is known for their fisheries because of course we're right on the ocean, but this, is the Mecca. So let's go take a look at what's fresh for today. You know, Santander is very big on sardines. It's actually world famous for their sardines. I don't think you get any fresher than this. Very famous fish around here, bacalao. I remember eating a lot of that when I was a kid. And that's salt. So it's cured in salt. You have to soak it for a couple of days to take the salt out. And then it's very tender fish. Look at that. Look at these clams. They're going to be fabulous in somebody's paella, because that's what you need to make a paella. So up here, our paella is a seafood paella. It's mostly all wild fish, so it's just caught out in the ocean, straight from the ocean, right to our tables. El Diluvio, that's a very famous place, and I've been told that this is where we need to come. So let's go have some tapas, Spanish style. We're not the only ones. This is the real tapa. Take a look. Little tiny things, you see? And they're also known as pinchos, which is just a little bite. So the famous thing here is café, coffee, cortado, which is the short little espresso, with uh, tortilla española, which is like a potato omelet. 
Sí, ah, mira qué bien. Wow, fresh tortilla. Wow, it's worth the wait. So the typical Spanish breakfast is a cortado en un pincho de patata, mira. Oh. Mm. Wow, está riquísimo, eh? Coffee, tortilla, and wine. It's breakfast, Spanish style. <laughs> Viva España. If you're the king of Spain, I'm talking about Alfonso the 13th, it's 1913. Where do you go summer? Well, how about your little house in Santander? Palacio de la Madalena, and I think we should go inside and, uh, I don't know, feel like a royal. Let's go. I can only imagine what how fun it must have been like to receive your guests from up here and to wave to all your friends. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? A king's work is never done. This is where the king of Spain did his work during summer holidays. Not bad. When the royal family came to live in Santander for the summertime, well, where did all their entourage stay? Well, right here at the Hotel Real. And guess what? It is so worth it. It's a beautiful place to have a drink or a coffee. So let's go take a walk to one of my must stops in Santander. Room key. Ah, gracias. Thank you. Okay, so we're not at the palace, but not too bad being at the Hotel Real, and this is what the favorites of the queens used to stay. Not bad. Like Versailles, the Hall of Mirrors. <laughs> closet, closet, closet. This is fit for a princess. Do visit Spain and come to Santander up in the north. It's one of the jewels of this country. And to find out more, go to www.santanderspain.info. You know, like most cities across Europe, Santander has many lovely plazas and pedestrian-friendly streets for us to wander and have a coffee. The whole idea is to linger and enjoy the place you're in, no rush. Our favorite word is tranquilo, which means slow down and relax. When we come back, we talk Zoomer travel right now with journalist Sandra Thomas. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. What if we're vaccinated, fully vaccinated? We could still be carriers, so it's going to take, a, I think, a big group effort. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. Are you eagerly awaiting the Go Ahead It's Safe to Travel directive from Health Canada? Me too. Up next, we talk with travel journalist Sandra Thomas, who's in touch with tourism associations from around the globe. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Carmen. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. My first question, how soon can I get back to Spain? Well, um, if it's essential travel, Carmen, you can go now. Um, Non-essential travel, that's going to be a little while longer. And that's all going to depend on vaccination programs between Canada and Spain. So now I see a lot of people still traveling. So in reality, if I wanted to go see my dad, it's not essential. It's not recommended. But what if I said, no, I have to go? Okay, if you have to go, um, I'll tell you this to begin with. It's a lot easier to get there than it is to get home. Um, if you want to go, what you have to start with is... Um, before you do anything, you have to book your COVID hotel for your return. And I'm not sure if people know that because for two reasons, number one, it's mandated. And number two, um, if you don't have a COVID hotel to check into when you return, they won't, you can't come home. Now you're a travel writer. You're, you spent your whole career basically on a jet going somewhere exotic and somewhere fun. What's your personal take on your, on that aspect of your career? Like when are you going to get on that plane again? Well, um, I'm dying to travel. I was, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in touch every day with other travel writers, and we all want to be, I guess, be responsible, and we don't want to um, give anybody the impression that it's safe to travel right now. So none of the travel writers I know around the world are traveling. There are some influencers out there who have been traveling, and they've been getting a lot of flack for that. But um, most, 
everybody I know is staying put for now. Now the vaccine is rolling out. A lot of people are getting vaccinated. How do you see travel? How do you see it rolling out now that the vaccine is sort of coming into play? I think I'm hoping um, there's going to be a real trend toward what they're calling slow travel, where you go and you really appreciate the culture of a country where you don't you don't just fly in as a tourist, but instead you appreciate the tourism of that country and their hospitality and take more of a local look at what people are doing. I think we're going to have to show some responsibility of our own because even if we're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, we could still be carriers. So um, there's an expectation that we'll still wear masks. And I mean, the province is struggling to get people to wear masks as it is. So if somebody's been vaccinated, I don't know if that's going to create an, a whole other level. I hope that things get back to normal soon. I mean, we're really anxious to get on a plane and go somewhere warm. But it's going to take, a, I think, a big group effort. And I just hope, I hope Canadians will, you know, will take it seriously. Well, that is a great ending note. Thank you so much, Sandra, for your knowledge and for sharing with us. And uh, before I go to Spain, I'll be sure to call you. You seem to know exactly what I need to do. <laughs> Thanks, Carmen. It was nice to see you. Thank you so much. Well, that's the show. If you'd like to see a topic covered here, get in touch. And remember, as our CARP president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So, carpe diem and seize your day.